But let's talk about that Utah-Oklahoma State game because, lo and behold, there has been, unless I'm missing something or I saw something wrong, there has been a major line change since our show yesterday. We did the we did this we talked about this game. This was the game of the week talked about on the Playbook Experts show uh, yesterday, and at the time Utah was a two and a half point favorite. Well, I checked the odds before the show, and I haven't been able to go through them all, and I'd like to be able to catch up on them as as we do. But I I, I looked at the odds before the show, and saw that the line had completely switched, and Oklahoma State's now the two and a half point favorite. And I checked to make sure Cam Rising was still playing, and there's no change unless somebody knows something that we don't. So were you surprised that there's been such a dramatic shift in 24 hours from dog two and a half to Oklahoma State favorite two and a half? Maybe they were watching our show yesterday because I was going over all the crazy <laughs> trends that favored Oklahoma State when they were a yes. home dog. Yes. Uh, and now, uh, now that's gone, unfortunately. Now that's gone. Yeah, that's gone. Now you can start talking about Utah and how good <laughs> they are as an underdog, and they're absolutely yeah. terrific. Uh, 78 and 39, go back to 1990 as an underdog, the Utah Utes. That's as good as it gets in college football. You're talking 67% on close to 150 plays. That's absolutely terrific. So they relish roles like this. It's all because of Kyle Whittingham, their head coach. He doesn't get outcoached hardly ever at all in football games. So this makes it difficult for me, Greg, because I love Utah as a dog, but I like Oklahoma State at home in this game for all the reasons we talked about on our show yesterday. It's going to be real, real difficult. Here's what I'll tell you. I'll tell you I wish I would have taken uh, – uh, you, uh, you, Oklahoma State plus two and a half, and yeah. then come back and play Utah plus two and a half, and then you have a nice five point middle in the football game. Absolutely. I didn't, so I'll end up watching the game, but it is one going to be one of the best games on the card Saturday. All right. And then uh, another game uh, that is going to be really good. And there's some good games this week. Last week, I, I don't know what it was. I mean, I, maybe I just wasn't even paying attention to it. And all of a sudden, I started getting ready to watch the games on Saturday. And I was like, man, the, the schedule is awful. I mean, the game, they had the top crew for ESPN at the LSU South Carolina game at 12 o'clock. That shows you what kind of schedule it was last week. It yeah. was pretty bad. But this yeah. week, not no, th there's a lot of good games to choose from. Let's talk about the Tennessee-Oklahoma game because this is definitely one of the games of the week. Everybody is just uh, really impressed and they need to be impressed with what's going on at Tennessee right now. They've got this young quarterback uh, that is delivering the good so far. And and I think maybe the biggest difference between because I think it, he's this kid's very similar to what I see with Anthony Richardson, uh, but I think the difference is is that this kid has Josh Heupel to work with. Richardson didn't have a whole lot of you know top end offensive guys on his side, so he needed to wait till he got to the pros. Well, Nico doesn't have to wait. He's got Josh Heupel working for him, and he's off to a really good start this year. But I've been really impressed. I don't know. Again, I mean, Tennessee looks right now to be a serious national championship contender, which is why we put them on our championship futures list last week. They've even come down since last week. They were 20, 20 22 to 1 when we got them. They're now down to 14 to 1 this week. So a lot of money going their way. But seven, they're a seven point favorite at Oklahoma. And I don't know how long it's been since Oklahoma has been a seven point home dog. They've only been a home dog once. Actually, they haven't been a home dog since 2016 when they lost by 21 to Ohio state, but they were only a one point dog in that game here. They're a seven point dog. Um, but Tennessee has won their first three games by 191 to 13. They're just hammering teams. But again, this is, they're, they're now entering a much different territory here Oklahoma, one of the best teams in the Big 12, in their SEC opener. They're going to be jacked up for this one. We're going to find out a lot about their head coach, Venables. Is he capable of winning these big games? Uh, what do you think about this one? Because uh, it's going to be kind of hard for me to, 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 to go against Tennessee with how great they're playing. But Oklahoma is an awfully tempting plus 225 money line home dog as well. Unquestionably, you're talking Oklahoma here. You're not talking uh, uh, like TCU or uh, NC State. Yeah, exactly right. You're talking Oklahoma, seven point home dog. You have to ask yourself, who are they playing? Ohio State, Georgia? No, they're playing Tennessee, an upstart who's really gotten off this terrific start. 
But the reason they're a seven-point home dog is Tennessee comes off a 70-point win. And uh, they're just obliterating opposition here right now. But it's a different story when you go into a tough venue like this. You mentioned Oklahoma home dog. Last five times they've been a non I mean, a, a, a conference home dog, I should say. Four and one to the spread the last five. So they've handled that role really rather quite well. The, my main concern, I do like Oklahoma here because I think this can come down to who scores last, this kind of a football game. But the one thing I'm fearful most of is Josh Heupel was a legend at Oklahoma. And he was fired at Oklahoma, if you recall, by Bob Stoops. And you know, that might not set well with Josh Heupel uh, because he was doing a, a wonderful job as an offensive coordinator there. But uh, they had to fire. They had to make a move because the football program had taken a step back offensively. He was a co-offensive coordinator. Both of the offensive coordinators were fired. So this is Josh Heupel's first crack back at Oklahoma, where he is a legend, Josh oh, Heupel, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Yes, he is. But uh, all that being aside, you still have to play the game on the field, and you have to win it with the players that you're taking out to the dance with. I think Oklahoma's going to be a highly competitive underdog in this game. I'll take them plus the points. If the upset happens, I won't be surprised. Yeah, the only thing I'm concerned with is I'm wondering whether or not is Oklahoma, uh, uh, have they just been kind of getting ready for this game and they've been not really thinking right on the field the last couple of weeks because they haven't been very impressive the last couple of weeks. I mean, well, they the one thing they've done, Greg, though, is they've played some pretty good defense so far this year. I think they're 265 a game, which is about 200 yards better than it was with Lincoln Riley when he was there. Uh, at the program, but you know, they played a lot of cupcakes to begin the football season here. So if they do have a little bit of semblance of defense, that'll go a long, long way in a game like this. Uh, Oklahoma 12 and one against the spread at home before they go on the road uh, for back-to-back -back road games. If that is something that you want to take advantage of as well. So yeah, Josh Heupel, uh, let's recall when he won the national championship as quarterback, that was like one of those years where Oklahoma did not have a big time offense. They were just awesome on defense. And Hypel was like well, like a Trent Dilfer type. Just do what you got to do, you know, make a few plays. Don't uh, lose the game. Yep. 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 And that's exactly what he did. And, and look, he was a little bit better than Dilfer in the college level, of course. That's, that's just, just think it's a really good comparison, though. Okay. So now let's talk about Michigan and USC. And Look, Michigan, and I said this before the year as a Michigan fan, of course, that I just didn't believe that they were going to be anywhere near the playoffs. And so far, uh, nothing has happened to change my mind. Uh, and and it all, it's all because of the quarterback position. Um, and, of course, they lose Jim Harbaugh. That, that, that's just that's, – that's, that, that's an easy one. But it, it was the offense. It was specifically a quarterback. And, uh, look, they, they've got a really top recruit, a quarterback, that's a true freshman. And I have no idea – if they're just going to throw him out there at some point this season, and then this kid comes out there and wows everybody and another dirt different Michigan team, or he's not ready, he, he just sits at the bench the whole year, or they just give it a try and he's just not ready. Um, so, so just keep that in mind because if, if, if they don't get a jolt from that quarterback position, the guys they have right now just aren't it. And so nothing's going to change between now and Saturday, I guess, unless – they make a move to the freshman and something happens there. But USC has looked so good so far. The only thing that concerns me about USC is Lincoln Riley's uh, record as a USC head coach in this spot. He's just two and seven against the spread as a road favorite at USC. Um, and USC also has a couple of bad trends in this spot. They dropped 12 straight covers as conference favorites of more than five after allowing 10 points or less. And that's the spot they're in here. So there are, and, and look, uh, you would think maybe Michigan eventually is going to have a, 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 a something positive happen. This is a fourth straight home game. Nothing has happened for them positively, but I just, I just can't see it. I just think USC is on another level and I'm willing to go with USC and give the points. Well, you know, this is a real key game for Michigan, Greg. Look at it this way. They're two and one on the season. They've been trashed and rightfully so for their play on the field. They have no depth whatsoever on this team. Uh, what you see as, as, as a starters in the field is as deep as they go. Uh, and they're sitting at two and one. They win this football game. They're three and one. And all of a sudden, all these bad marks about <laughs> yeah, Michigan are in the rear view mirror. They're yeah. a three and one Michigan defending national champion type, type yeah. team. But as far as the talent goes on the field here, I think it's all Southern Cal in this football game. 
Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to buy into a new quarterback. This new quarterback is here out of necessity, out of need, not because of an injury or so forth. They're making a change because Davis Warren just flat out didn't have it. And you know, you, you lose, you lose JJ McCarthy and all the talent that you had, it was going to be, it was going to be very, very difficult for them to repeat, even if they weren't a defending national champion. I think Southern Cal is a better team. I would not play Michigan in this role here. In fact, I made a, a promise to myself I'm not going to play Michigan. This is after I got toasted uh, playing Michigan against Texas, and I said I will not back Michigan until they win a football game convincingly. That win over uh, Arkansas State was a 28 to 18 was not convincing. Okay, uh, so I'm going <laughs> to either opt for USC in this football game or stay out of it, but I will not be taking Michigan plus the points here. Yeah, and keep in mind, too, that their star tight ends banged up. Um, I'm not sure what his status is for the game. That's huge because he's their offensive weapon right now because uh, he could be a first-round draft pick. Um, and and then, like you said, this this move to this other, this orgy guy, you know what he is? He's Malik Willis. That's what he is. He's Malik Willis. He's an athlete, but he's got no accuracy whatsoever throwing the football. He does not does, he does not belong on the, uh, on the on the football field in a game like this, throwing the football. So they're going to have to try to trick their way, run their way to victory against USC and hope the defense comes up big, just like the Packers and how they beat the Colts last week. Difference is USC is a much better college football team than the Colts are an NFL team.